Alrighty folks, uh, week five update, here we go. I have something interesting to say though. Behind this camera is a mirror. In this mirror, I can see if it's plain or not. This way I don't get frustrated if it shuts off because I'm and I don't have to keep talking. So I can I can check it in. So if I look up I'm probably checking the camera rather than you know in the other videos turning around and looking to see if it's still on. Alright, anyways, <coughs> let's get to the good stuff. What has week five been? Honestly, well, which I've been all the whole time, but uh, not that great. Why do I say that? It's because um, I intake a lot of sugar uh, and some junk food. <clears throat> I have not been able to afford a lot of green vegetables and do my juicing, whatnot. No longer doing the detox. I don't have anything else to detox with at the moment. And, well, that takes a toll. I do feel the loss of energy according to what I've been eating. But, I do have the benefits still carrying over from the detox. <coughs> what I mean by that is, even my father also, we feel more alive. Something that may have been holding us back has now been removed. And... It's like we got a forward on life, if that makes any sense. Uh, I really, I do encourage detoxing uh, as heavy as possible. The, the chlorella powder really, really, really was disgusting, but it did immense amounts of work because it, I found it targeted different than the teas, uh, the, the liver detoxing teas. I found it just something special about that that you didn't get in, the, in those teas. So, moving on from that, I wanted to read a verse, not maybe a verse, but pretty much a large portion of the Bible, and it'll kind of tie into what I wanted to tell y'all. So, this is from the book of Hebrews, <coughs> chapter 12, we're starting at verse, um, uh, let's say verse 5. So, my son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be wary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the ones he loves, and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons, for what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate son and not sons, children, illegitimate children and not sons, excuse me. Besides this, we have had early fathers, earthly fathers, who had disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them, but he disciplined us for our good, that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to all those who have been trained for it. Therefore, lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make, your, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather healed. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no <clears throat> root of bitterness springs up and causes us trouble, that it may become defiled, that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. Um, for you, uh, you know that afterwards, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with many tears. Now, there's a couple of things I see from this. Let's start with what it's really talking about. <coughs> and that's spiritual discipline. And I keep going back to it and back to it that everything I'm doing here on earth, like physically uh, studying, eating the workout, <coughs> uh, the aesthetics of the body and all, all of this nature, it is set upon the foundation of your spirit. When I say spiritually, again, I'm talking about Christianity. I'm really specifically not talking about the religion. I'm talking about a relationship with, uh, with, with God the Father through Jesus Christ, through the given gift of the Holy Spirit. 
<clears throat> that's when I say spirituality. I mean in the utmost purest form of obeying what the Bible says in a relationship form. And Hebrews mentioned the root of bitterness. And I, I, I definitely, I've, I had that root. That, that, that's, um, I know I had it, had it removed. And if you can, it's a whole other story about removing things spiritually uh, that I'm not going to get into. It's something I really address personally. But that bitterness, it was the opposite of love, which is love is patient, love is kind and enduring, you know. In First Corinthians, you, you could read what love is, and that was not what bitterness was. And so I did not have that love. I had anger, frustrations. Uh, I had plenty of sins that I was doing in my anger. And what I mean by that <coughs> was that I was doing things to my body um, that was tearing it down. That bitterness drove me into finding ways of numbing that pain, uh, exerting that, that frustrations. And it was an ungodly sinful way, and it had an effect on my body. Now, having that removed, I had found love for myself, love for God, love for others, and I love them enough to take care of myself so that they don't have to suffer. And what I mean by that is that, say I had, you know, I have to do a triple heart bypass because of the way I was mistreating my body, my family suffers. Ultimately, yes, I suffer myself. But we don't live alone. We live in a world, <clears throat> and us humans really need each other uh, to help build forth and go forward in things, uh, support and, and, and advancement in these things. And being hurt and down and out, it's just, it's not giving off the good fruit for us. You know, we're, we're not getting good fruit. And speaking from my perspective and from my life, Changing my spirituality has, has, has absolutely changed the way I do everything else in my life. And what Hebrews was talking about was discipline spiritually. And that was something that was my main focus really from the age of 18. Was to focus spiritually in. <clears throat> I didn't mind so much my body, my education as much as I did in my spirituality. And in my life I didn't have to work a lot at a job, an 8 to 5 kind of job. I didn't have to go to school, so, and I don't have any friends anymore. Um, so this really gave me time to focus on myself. <coughs> and when you have all that time to focus on yourself, you really can attack deep. And I had a spiritual father um, who was able to, in essence, guide me, fight with me, help deliver me from many things, but ultimately, I got to the point where <clears throat> I didn't need someone else's spiritual relationship. Uh, I, I could just go to God. Meaning, a lot of times if we go to church, rather than working our faith, we go work the faith of other people at church. You know, use their good and strengthful relationship with God to help deliver you, rather than you building one on one uh, with God yourself. And that, that's something that I got to. And I can just go to God, and it's rare that I ever need my dad. Normally, God says, bring him in. And again, people have different spiritual gifts. So, <clears throat> I have to accept that he can help build me or help me in a certain way that I just, I can't myself, you know. <clears throat> so, what I was carrying on to was, once you get past spirituality and its discipline, you can carry this discipline into your daily routine and this is something that I'm working on because the discipline I have to go through is different I don't have necessarily an earth earthly boss you know I don't work I don't have a uh, income coming in and have to pay my taxes and you know I, uh, Caesar <laughs> and according to you know I, I give your taxes uh, to who it's due to according to Caesar and whatnot I, I don't I have to do these things and so I don't have teachers that say you know what if you don't pass this you're not going to you know get your master's degree your bachelor's whatever it may be so I don't have a schedule set up before me oh you have a 15 minute break there you have this and so I have to create this discipline <coughs> of getting the work done but also 
being sense enough to say, okay, God says, okay, when you get up, I, I want you to do this today. I want you to accomplish this today. All right, stop that. Go here. I want you to speak to that person and say this. And it, it's gotten to the point where you had to be sensitive. And and there's this, this discipline point comes in is that, you know, sometimes I don't want to train. I don't want to weight train. I, I, I just rather, you know, sit down, watch something, eat a bag of chips, you know, and to get up on time to, to put down some gamings, uh, you know, video, not video, necessarily video games, but I mean, on the cell phone or, or a computer game, or whatever it may be, it's like, to be disciplined in the essence, not to be distracted by everything, it's not by, uh, <laughs> there's no lack of distraction. <laughs> if anything, there's a choking amount, and like I'm, I'm learning to be disciplined, and it's very difficult uh, to be self-disciplined, self-motivated. Yes, I work for God, <laughs> and my teacher is God, but there's I think this problem with human beings is that we're not as re we're more reverent and fearful of man and woman than we are of God. In essence, if God <clears throat> were to come into my, you know, my my apartment here, stand beside me, Jesus, whatever, and told me, you know what, I want you to sit down and work, and I'm not leaving until it's done, and you're going to get a paycheck at the end, and um, I think I would be more on my duties than, okay, God's there, he hasn't stepped down, he talks to me, yeah, but, I mean, he's not yelling at me either, you know, he didn't hit me, he, there's, you know, he's... Is he going to kill me? Is he going to take my life? Is he not? Uh, is he going to make it hell? Is he going to... It's like... <laughs> he's not a physical boss, you know? And that's the thing that a lot of people struggle with is that, you know, oh, God's not going to sexually please me, you know? He's always going to you know, take care of all my, my needs. Oh, but I have a sexual need and, you know, I can't sleep with Jesus, you know? And, and, and there, they, you know, there's this aspect, but again, that goes right in with faith, you know? Uh, uh, Hebrews, if I can actually find it, uh, it, it spoke about faith, and I was like, wow. Um, uh, be patient with me, please, y'all. Um, anyways, um, okay, now this is uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And <clears throat> that's why I have faith in God, and, and I know what He tells me to do, and I do it now. Again, I, back onto single discipline, it, it's, it's like, when I lack discipline, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm quite foolish, and, and I suffer the consequences of it. Like, I'm not too proud of this week. I think I, think I lacked some discipline. And I need to up my game, and you know, it's it is. I have to, I, I'm I'm looking to see if I'm doing something wrong, and I'm, I'm trying to be sensitive to the fact, you know, I, I got more pimples now. My my sleeping order is is upside down. I can't fall asleep to about four or five in the morning, even if I go to, and I'm in bed for four hours and I can't sleep, you know. Um, my skin is dry on my face because I was I was dumping out on uh, going too hot on the showers. You know, for comfort, like I was, I was, I was feeding off of comfort this this week, and you know, you'll justify the reasons why you do what you do. <laughs> That's for sure. You know, I don't even know if I'm I'm properly on the week five date. You know, this is this is something I always struggled with was commitment, committing to something. You know, I committed to Jesus, <coughs> and but now. Um, Commitment in my 24 hours of my day is something that I need, you know. I can go spiritually, you can go pray, you can get delivered, but it's not going to take 24 hours of your day. You know, okay, say, spend time with God, I read my Bible, um, I get delivered from something, okay, hour, hour and a half. It still leaves you with, you know, 23, 22 and a half hours in a day to do something else. And in uh, those, those hours that you have, how disciplined are you? And I mean, disciplined, still being obedient to what God says to do. How many people wake up and say, Lord, what do you want me to do today? Because this is this, <coughs> this phrase that God taught me when, in a conversation I've had with him was that, 
If you focus on what God is doing today, you will have no burdens of yesterday, no anxieties of tomorrow, and no fears of today. <coughs> and, that, and that was so awesome because so many of us are burdened from things that have happened in the past. We just carry it on our shoulders, unforgiveness, uh, the, the what, what ifs, you know, the, the things we had to endure. And then and, and anxieties of how am I going to, in the future, of how I'm going to pay my bills. What's this person going to say? What am I going to do? What, what's change going to be like if I go to church? If I just, if, and, and, uh, and then, you know, this anxiety dash fear. But and then many of us today is, oh, I don't know what's going to happen today. It's, it's, you have all your fears of, of today, which is kind of a bit of a anxiety <laughs> of nonetheless of the future. But, um, wow. I hate to say it, but I guarantee that the vast majority of y'all are not where God asked you to be. <clears throat> How many of y'all played a sport because that's what God put on your heart? Started that business because God said, and even if you did say, did you ask him how to build it or did you decide? Are you, did you decide your education? Did you let someone else decide for you? Or did you ask God, Lord, what is it? Where in life do you want me? What What do you want me to do? You know, most of us are in a situation that we place ourselves in because we thought it was right. You know, I've made many bad decisions. I put m lots of money into and time into things that I just should not have, and you come out of these these situations usually hurt and down and out. You really are. You shouldn't have been in in that position, and and it's it's your fault. You're responsible for your actions. You know, <clears throat> oh my car got stolen. Should you even been there? You know, did did I ask you to be there? I mean, even got to the point where <clears throat> God called me. You know, showed me that I had some Christian ambition. You know, did did I ask you to give him that money? Did I ask you to help him? No, we all go, oh, the Bible says go help this and go help that and be needy and then do the help the needy and, and, and you know, to be give this and give everything. And, <clears throat> and then God told me, that, that blessing I gave you was for you and I didn't want you to share it. If I wanted to bless them, I would have blessed them. You know, <clears throat> I did it on my own decor. You know, it's, you know, people would say, did they God ask you to build all these churches? You know, we get saved. Oh, I want to open churches here. I want to open a ministry there. I want to open a food drive. And then I, 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 I. How many of us, God, God wants, God put on my heart, deposited on my heart, <coughs> and convicted me that he wants me to open up a church here. How, how many people do that? You know, oh, yeah, God, you know, um, I'm working at this, this so-and-so place, and, I need to make money, and I have to because uh, this doesn't make sense. If I add up this and this and that, and I calculate this, and it arrives, then it won't arrive, then so I have to do this, and and then we start becoming the planners, as, as if we know what what's up. Thing is, God knows the future. He knows our hearts. He knows the heart of the person next to you, the person in China, the person in Africa, the person in, who lives in Antarctica. He knows it all. And he can align different things that you can't. <clears throat> so, then it comes in the faith, was that he's going to provide. Like, if you're in the will of God, will he not provide for you? I mean, he provides for the birds, he provides for the worms, he provides for animals, he provides food for the trees. You know, have you ever seen a tree have an anxiety attack? Of how am I going to get my next food? Uh, uh, this winter, is it going to be a bad winter? Is it this winter, you know, if I'm going to get leaves, is someone break up my leaves? No, God provides. He, and how much more will He provide for us human beings? He loves us so much, I don't think we realize. You know, we have this big issue what love is. <laughs> you know, I, we seek to look at, you know, broken humans for love. You know, but hurt people hurt people. And they are seeking unconditional love because they find love by humans, but it's limited, it'll fail eventually. Or it has these conditions. You have to. I want you to love me like this. My, you know, a wife will go to her husband, or maybe not even go up to the husband. And it's like, I expect my husband to love me like this. I expect him to do this. I want flowers then. If he doesn't give me flowers then, does he really love me? You know, and my woman, she should be able to do this. If you really truly love me, you would do. This. And then you set these conditions. You come into marriage with this preemptive of what love is and what how you should be loved and uh, loved others. But again, what love is is look at First Corinthians. 
you know, and, and love is God is love. Also, <clears throat> and God's everything that First Corinthians says. And the only way that we'll get that love is through Christ, through through God. But how can love be in you if you have all this again, the root of bitterness in you? You know, this next anxiety, these fears, you know, the opposite of faith is, is fear and doubt. And <laughs> how much it'd be much easier to be disciplined in life in the physical aspect of life if you didn't have all of these it'd be much easier and you know I'm at that point of being disciplined that you know I'm, I, I wake up and, and I want to know what God wants me to do today and I have faith that God will provide and he has provided I'm not saying it was easy we're, we're called as Christians are called to the blessings and to the afflictions that Jesus Christ went through I'm not saying all of us are going to be put on our knees, flogged, you know, uh, a crown of thorns and, and crucified. That That's not what I mean by enduring the same afflictions as God, but not necessarily the same step by step as what He endured. But nonetheless, <coughs> us Christians are going against the world and Satan, you know, the, 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 the prince of this world, will not want you to be saved, does not want you to have the truth, and you do everything to distort the truth so that you're, He's the father of lies. Now, I'm working on myself to become more disciplined. And the only way that I'm going to become more disciplined in a holy and righteous manner is letting God work in me. To, to accept that I do not have it all. <clears throat> that I can't do it on my own strength. I don't know it all. And that God knows better. And to be able to be more efficient, I need less of me and more of Him in me. And that's where, this is, this is where I, I learned a very valuable lesson. You know, one day I went into a prayer room and I said, on my knees, <coughs> oh Lord, oh, oh, teach me how to focus. I really need to know how to focus and, and etc. And God, and God says like, shut up, Sam, shut up. Okay, you know what? Samuel, you do not know what you need. I do. You need this. And he went, poof. Right on me, oh, oh man, <clears throat> it was something that I didn't even know. And what I mean by that, I didn't even know, was that, okay, back in the, uh, in the old time, you know, the high priest, when they were going to the covenant, <coughs> tabernacle, um, uh, I mean, and, and uh, oh, whatever, um, it was basically, you know, forgive me from my sins and the sins that I do not know. And a lot of us don't realize that we're sinning are blind to it or lack of discernment to our sins, self-justified or believed a lie as a truth. And so this is why I tell people if you want to, to know what your next step is, oh, I think I want to do this or I want to do that, that that's you deciding. Excuse me. Sorry, I mean, I, I took these pills and, 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 and I got the fish oil, the mega-3 oil coming back in me and I don't like fish oil tasting. And I'm trying to trying to keep that that <laughs> that fish oil down. Excuse me. And I ask God when I ask, you know, um, Lord, deliver me of uh, everything that's not of You, and then He'll tell me what it is. Or ask Him, Lord, what's what's that next step You want me to do? What What do You want me to do? What do You want to be delivered from? And with an acute enough uh, hearing, if you listen, shut up and listen. You'll hear what he says, I want this. And a lot of times, most of the time, we shrug off, oh, what is it you want? But I just told you. But it's not the answer you wanted. <coughs> or it's a subject that, oh, no, 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 uh-uh. I'm not going to deliver that. I'm not going to, you know, forgive that person. Oh, no, I'm not going to stop. Uh, you know, no, I'm not letting go of marijuana. No, absolutely not. No, uh-uh, mm, mm You know, when we go on that, and then we block. You know, it's so I, I want I want to be delivered from cigarettes. Yeah, but Lord wants you, Lord, I, I want you to forgive someone first. Uh, no, I want cigarettes. And the Lord says, no, I want you to, you know, forgive this person. And we do these 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 reasoning thing, this reasoning game, right? But He knows where the source is. He knows what your body is capable of being delivered from. <clears throat> I'm telling you, the spiritual stuff drains. You know, the spiritual fighting drains. Deliverance, you know, being forgiving someone, 
for hurting you. It's like an operation. You know, you really, you're laid out and, you know, you're searching as God and he, he removes these, these, these pains, these, whether it be self-inflicted, whether it be um, <laughs> inflicted from your parents, from, from a close friend, someone you didn't know. Um, he has to clean the wound, he has to move out the whatever's been stabbed with, like, you know, st oh, I've been stabbed in the back so many times. Literally, you're not, there's no stab wounds in their back, but stabbed in the back, you know, you're wounded. <clears throat> a stab in the back is a wound to you. And how many people address it in a holy manner, which is God, you know, you know I forgive them, and God gives you the strength that's divine to forgive. Forgive meaning, it actually means to let go, you know. And, you know, you move on, and it's something you forget. I mean, as you can see, I don't, I don't think you can see, but I have a scar in my hand. You know, I can, it's, it doesn't hurt. Now, if this was a fresh scar, if it was fresh, not a fresh scar, excuse me, a fresh wound, you, you wouldn't be tapping it. You know, I see it, I still know what happened, but the pain <coughs> is no longer there, and it's healed. And it was this, this healing process also that was taking a lot of the energy uh, out of me spiritually. And go, knowing how much I've gone through spiritually, uh, you guys are so far away. And, and I, don't, I don't mean this in the most any any way demeaning. It's just to say how sinful we really are. And I mean, I got a long a long ways ahead of me still. But wow, we were when we were blind, we were so naive, so blinded, so lacking in discernment. So wounded, actually, and uh, you know, when I look back at everything I've been delivered from and, and, and broken free from, I'm wow. I was really ignorant, naive, stupid, foolish, wicked, uh, <coughs> ashamed. I, I could really say that ashamed of what I've gone through. Almost, in times, pissed at myself, you know. For how being so stupid, and, but you know, by the grace of God, I've, I'm out. You know, I, I didn't realize how deep I got myself into, how far angry. You know, many of us over do do so much work, so we don't feel the pain, eat the pain. Just <coughs> we compensate somewhere in our life. We compromise. Our integrity, we compromise different things in our life just so that we don't feel this pain. And at the same time, we're searching for this unconditional love. We just want to be loved, accepted. We want peace in our life. If, 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 if Seriously, I mean, if you sat down now and said, you know, thought about it, when in your life, if you can remove those problems in your life, when, when you be a little bit more happier, if you didn't have to live with certain pain, and then what Hebrews said at the end was, you know, <clears throat> about Yisu, you know, that it was it was too late even if he was crying. So what happens, a lot of us, um, you know, you ate your emotions so much, it's too late, man. You're already having heart attacks. You're dying. It's too late. You know, no matter how much you cry, it, it, it's, I don't know, God does these exceptions and God can, you know, save and I'm not going to rule out that God can save you. But, <coughs> it's, to let you wait it too long, you know. I mean, I, I we're not. None of us are certain how, when we're gonna live. We're gonna live another minute, and we put off these things, and and, I, and it is, it's it's really sad, you know. A lot of people commit suicide uh, because they have so much anger <clears throat> that they can't handle. They can't manage it, manage it anymore. You know, at eleven years old, I wanted to commit suicide. I, I was just. So pissed, you know. I saw no. I had no hope, you know. Um, until, you know, I read the, the what, what I was, you know. I had my suicide note written and everything, and um, you know, open up the Bible for the last time. Sorry, I shut off. So, I flipped open the Bible and arrived at Psalms one eighteen. I read it and, um, yeah. There was a conviction that came out of that, a, <clears throat> a hope. You know, he also showed me my the reaction of my father um, 
finding me and, and I didn't want to do him any harm, but God gave me that there, there was this hope that he would deliver me out of it, <clears throat> you know. Now I can see, you know, at the age of 24, and I could say that he delivered me out of that pain that I was suffering back then. Took a lot of hard work and a lot of time. But I managed. And grace and glory be to God, I mean, all those people that hurt me, they abandoned. They abandoned me, they just, no one of them helped me. In the end, it was just God and I, and and, it, I, and with my father, I know it was God and my dad, or else he would have been like every other dad, every other human, every other man. You know, he still struggles everything that men have to struggle with, but I know it was God in him. <clears throat> and the only thing that's good to me, I know it's God in me. People see me nowadays, and oh, you're so true, you're, you know, you're so you're happy, and <clears throat> and they're they're attracted to me. I'm not even sure why. People are uh, attracted to me and they don't even know why and it's really... They see that love, the peace in me. And, they, 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 and deep down inside they want that. They're even to the point jealous <coughs> uh, of me. And they want to, to have that. But they don't want to go through what it, the sacrifices that it takes to get there. <coughs> Most of us want this quick fix. And that's why I do all these. Not necessarily. I do what I have to do, but <coughs> and then there's there's these these compromises what I don't want to do. Not everyone makes these you no know, quick five minute videos and you know keep the the attraction of people, put the music, put the fire. And I, I don't want to persuade you here to watch these. I want you to watch because. You seek to, to, to be set free. <coughs> now you're willing to take the time and hear these things. It's just, now listen to me for five minutes. That's going to change your life. No, it's not by one or couple, one or two prayers that God's going to set you free. It's not a couple of deliverance, a couple of forgiveness. It, it's you do it. You do the job and you do it right. You do you t it takes however long it takes it takes you do it, you know. Uh, you sometimes you're in a situation where you're not allowed to because you put yourself there. But from experience, God took me out of it all. I've gone through grand theft auto. I've gone through selling drugs. I've gone through uh, and taking uh, weed, hash, heavy alcohol, speed, ecstasy, MDMA, hash oil, whatever, excessive sugar. Uh, Violent video games, bad music, whatever, speeding, drinking, driving, I've, I've, <coughs> no, break in, thrift, theft, angriness. God took me out, and but I was willing to change. I was willing to accept that I was wrong. And he was right, and you know, a lot of help. Yes, reading the Bible really helped me to understand things, uh, to, to use it as a foundation of the truth. But a lot of it took me time getting on my knees, and you know, we're sitting down, standing up in the shower, in the dark, in the light, in the bus, and anywhere, and just uh, talking with God. and you know, he tells you something, you go and do it. He says, you know what, man? You know, Samuel, you, you know, I see myself, I get triggered by something. You know, something just, mm, a word that gets said, you know, rape. Mm, the word triggers someone, you know, someone pushes you. Mm, you get that <coughs> that trigger of when you're young, someone push you, no one's ever going to push you again like that. You know, you, 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 smell, um, you see a woman getting hit, you know, and then you see your mom. You remember your mom being beat, you know. <clears throat> Whatever the trigger may be, I had to take like a 10-15 minute break to 
let the, the camera cool down, excuse me. But I was talking about when you get triggered, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to sin in your anger? Are you going to feed it? Are you going to try to ignore it? Which, ignoring it, neglecting it, doesn't change the fact that it's still, it's still there, it's existent. Or are you going to man up, woman up, whatever that's supposed to mean? <sighs> Get sensitive again and say, All right, that hurts there. That pain's there. Let's deal with it. Most of us don't want to kick up that muddy water. We want it to be nice and smooth. We want in the eyes of others that we have this clear water. But I'm pretty sure if someone comes in and walks in it, it's going to get muddy. It's going to get all nasty and gritty. So, what I'm trying to say is, you and I are not both perfect. Guarantee you have something you need to deal with in your life. That's absolutely sure. There's no way around that. I guarantee you, you are a hurt person. Guarantee that. How? I don't know. You know I may not be able to feel the pain <clears throat> that you've gone through. But I'm pretty sure there's no situation that you can bring before God that he can't deal with. Okay? I'm just pointing you to where I got my healing, how I got out, and how I'm going to continue to get better. I had to repent from my sins, from my lifestyle, from the way of thinking, and my actions. And I know you too, <clears throat> you need to start repenting. Where to dive in? Just start diving in. Just dive in. Don't don't try to understand it. Don't try to figure it out. You won't. You're not got it. Simple as that. All you need to know is you was wrong. And that God was right. And that along the way, things that confused you will make sense. Things that perplexed you will become simple. The meaning of life will reveal itself to you. Unconditional love <clears throat> will dwell in you. Where you are weak, you are made strong. But what I want to say by this, which I was tying into <clears throat> my weekly update, was these things take time. What I mean, what do I mean by it takes time? It means... You can build something too fast. If anyone knows anything about gardening, add too much nitrogen or have too fertile of a soil with something like cucumbers. You'll get some big, big cucumbers, but it's hollow inside. <clears throat> they say the good things in life take time to mature. You know, you get an old elder person. The, the maturity that they came with with time a good wine or whiskey, a race car, it takes so much time to build. But let's, if you know anything about racing, let our body be like this this race car, where you, where, where they spend, you know, they they improve one hundred things to improve one second. <clears throat> you know, spirituality is that only that area that I say that. You could just keep going and 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 then not being like extreme. But there are people, and including myself, that have tried to do something too fast where the growth, um, I was I was growing too much for myself, for what my body could take, to for it to be sustainable, for it to be something that does not hurt me when I'm, you know, 50, 60 years old. Okay, I'll take weight training. A lot of these people, they get massive. 
and laid it on the road. Their joints are out of place. Their body is tired. They overexerted their body at a young age. Many people overwork. They, they, somewhere along the lines, this working satisfies them. This, to be the best in the world, to be the best at something, to be at the best at sport, they have to be, to, to create an identity, to create something to fill that hole. And they had to get better because when they didn't, they felt horrible, they felt like this, and then they put themselves into jobs and, 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 and competitions that they have no, no reason to be there in the first place. <clears throat> I'm trying to build a legacy. You know, physically, I want to <clears throat> build a platform that I can have for the rest of my life. I'm not seeking to get buff, to get super smart, to <clears throat> get super healthy so quickly. I want to move step by step. I don't want to get to that mountaintop and leaps, because I'll miss things along the way. Uh, you know, I... So it's hard to put you know, sometimes the, the way the why we do something it, it's it's so deeper than what we really expect you know what we see on the surface you know how was your day great your de your day was so much deeper than that how did you become a good Christian how were you the last fifty years of marriage oh yeah this and that no it's so much deeper than that it's every single thing you do adds up everything. And it depends how sensitive you are where you're looking. You know? It depends where you're looking to. And that's why I look to God. <laughs> to guide me. You know, I listen to my body. Yeah, I know. I could push my body to the point where I feel my fibers ripping. That I'm in pain. But that's... That's not sustainable. That's not for me. I will push. I'll work out when my body says... A part of me says, stop. It's enough. I stop. When it says, you know what? No, I don't want to lift. I need, I need to rest. I will rest. You know. And then this is where this discipline comes in, where it's another aspect that can help me to get the proper amount of sleep, <coughs> to, to, to eat well, to to be able to sacrifice and say no to some things, just to better win in another area. And that's where I'm working. I'm working on my discipline at this point. I will always continue to better myself in a sustainable way. <clears throat> um, I won't, don't want to, to, uh, to take from my integrity out, take some integrity out and replace it with compensation. You know, I don't need coffee, I just need to sleep well. I don't need uh, uh, supplements if I can get them in the proper places. And I was going to say protein supplements and then get, you know, all big and then, you know, wither back down when you stop taking it. But I meant, like, you know, because there's the supplements like the omega-3, which I don't eat seafood and I, I just won't. I, I find it vomiting my stomach doesn't digest it. But that's, anyways, that's a whole other thing. I want to not, like, you know, jump from 10 pounds to 20 to 30. I want to, to really build each fiber, you know work from, you know, 20, 21, 22, 23, you know, in that sense that not skipping, you're not going from go-kart racing to Formula One, you know, or from a go-kart to GT to Formula One. <coughs> it's, okay, God will guide you in a way that you can take it. <coughs> not everyone has the same development rate. One person can read a book by the time you finish two chapters. So be it. You may be able to read people in a way that they can't read people, but we all have different skills, and that's why I don't really like to compare myself to other people or to be compared. Um, we have different rates. We are all different parts of the body of Christ. Someone has to be the head. Some are the fingernails. Some are the feet. Some are the eyes. The eyes should not desire to do what the feet do, and the feet should not desire what the eyes should do. You have a, a you have a gifts, you have gifts. God has a plan for you. <clears throat> it's not like He created you without reason. He knows you even more than you know yourself. <clears throat> and
and he knows what's best for you. He gave you a free will, and with that free will, you dictated what you wanted, rather than giving, really submitting that will to God. <clears throat> I'm just doing my best to be a faithful servant, following what my master does best, which is to know it all. And I accept it. No, I'm not. I'm not a... The Bible says a slave to righteousness. <clears throat> then yes, I willingly submitted myself to Him, my Master. I willingly did it. No one forced me to follow God. No one forced me to follow what the Bible says. <clears throat> yeah. I chose, I did, I felt, and I'm conquering. I live with it. I have these convictions in my life, and I can't expect you, and I don't expect you to feel what I'm feeling right now, what I'm saying. You know, I've never done heroin, so <coughs> a heroin addict tells me um, what the feelings they go through when they're on it. I don't know. I never felt it. People always want to smile on video. People always want to make things look like it's great. Everything's gravy. And I don't know why. I don't know how this is uh, an expression. How everything's gravy. I don't know what gravy has to do. Smooth. I mean, I, I don't know. But it's tough. It's really extremely tough to <clears throat> to touch those emotions that you you've hidden that you put walls in front of. It's hard to address these reasons, uh, these these emotions inside of you that kind of built your identity today. The you know many people have the fear of, of changing and change for the worse, or the unknown of what's going to happen if I begin changing. To let go of everything you know, to let go of the the identity that you have in the world, to let go of everything that you built, because. You will eventually, if you truly get close to God, there will be a point where you have to destroy the foundation that you built. Or let God destroy it. So that He can build His. Because how can you put the things of God upon your foundation? You can't. You, who are you to think you can hold God and the things that He does? You can't. And so... I watched my life be ripped apart. My God, you ripped, torn, things removed, and then and, and passed through the furnace more than seven times. Like, <clears throat> it's hard. I will keep saying that. There was nothing easy about it. But was it rewarding? Yes, it was extremely rewarding. <clears throat> May not be materialistically. Dad's got eleven cents in the bank. I owe three thousand five hundred. You know, I have no car. My father has no car. I've been stuck in this apartment for nine, ten years now. We lost our house. We lost hundreds, of thousands of dollars. Most of my clothes that I get are uh, <clears throat> from uh, thrift shops, thrift stores. My food right now is donated by other people. But um, I have a resume that you could probably wipe your butt with. I have. I don't really even have a high school education, but if you saw how rich my heart was, how rich my soul was, your jaw would drop. And there's these rewards that you will get in heaven <clears throat> that will have no comparison with what you see on earth. And I 
know that the true part really comes and kicks in when you're in heaven. When it comes judgment day, you either be placed on side A or side B. And when you're on side A of God's side, not everyone's going to be on the same level. <clears throat> People have worked differently and will reap what they sow. And I don't do it for the rewards. I was just tired of being in vain. God gave me a second chance to make life straight. And yeah, I did stumble along the way. I know I didn't say it was I went all smooth sailing the whole time. There's a lot of times I still went into sin, and I still sin. And there's the things that I still struggle today. <clears throat> but when I'm out, I'm out. And when God asked me to help deliver someone, help set them free, with joy while I do it. I don't know the purpose of these videos, but God asked me to. You know, I don't. I didn't come in here with any really plan. The only thing I had planned was to read you that Hebrews, to give you an update. You know, I have no duration of the video. Just have like a time frame to week five, end of week five. You know. But hey, guys, let's get a little bit more um, exciting. Um, how do I feel physically? I feel the effects, like I said, of, <clears throat> of bad management, bad choices, but I feel, <clears throat> I feel thicker, I feel more alive, more fit, but, uh, you know, I, I don't, I haven't really been doing ab exercises, but this is something that I will address, <clears throat> I will eventually probably start dressing cardio when it stops snowing. I haven't been stretching, and I should be. Um, it's just something I've been loafing on. But I've been slowly working my body into accepting more and more weight, more and more work. Before this, I would always displace something, always be hurt, and suffer because of how would I put it, um, injury, discomfort. And so... I've been doing it well enough that I have not hurt myself yet. I'm really happy and proud about that. I have been having results. <clears throat> Maybe my weight's about 170. I was not able to find a place to do body composition, <clears throat> just to scale at my grandmother's. I'm pretty much 170. I was 175 when I started. I do feel that I've lost some stomach fat, or fat on my stomach. I Yeah, I mean, that detox really helped, really, really helped. I'm beginning to get my setup ready, and I'm, God's preparing me. God has a plan for me, and preparation is, is this big word in me, and I truly desire not to be limited to my body. You know, I really want to be there for my wife, for my children. To be able to serve others. And. I'm so full of emotion really right now. So many memories are passing by through my head. Things that I've gone through. But I can tell you it's worth it. Straight up. Real talk. You go against the crowd. You go against the grit, the current. But you'll get persecuted. You'll probably be made fun of. Some haven't, some didn't. <coughs> but God works your faith and develops it. It's so beautiful, the character that you become. <coughs> I know. I love, I love where I've come, become now. But I'm, I'm going to log off. I'm going to say, when you watch my videos and you get to the end, when you read my poems and you get to the end, when you hear me talk, get to the end. Now it's your part to carry the ball at this point. It's up to you 
to stop what you're doing and start repenting. Start digging in, start forgiving. <clears throat> start open up a landline to God. Start trying out what your heart says to Him. To start. If you've already started, continue. Continue. Continue at the rate of growth that God puts in your heart. But don't stop. If you hit a plateau, <coughs> God will get you through it if you truly seek, if you truly desire. But I'm not here to, to tickle yours, really. I just... I want to see you healed. I want to... I want, I want to you just stop feeling the pain that you, you know, that you don't need to endure. To be held down and your growth inhibited by your fears. Your sluggishness because you carry burdens upon your back. On your chest. In fact, you can't let go on life. You suffer and you suffer for in vain. So. I'll see you week six. You know, at the end of this video I got. Week five pictures. I'll try to put some before. Um, pictures and. Uh, it, it's just a visual representation of how I've improved. I can't I can't put my spiritual body out in front of you to show. Just have to you have to open your heart and feel mine. I love y'all. Week six is coming. I'm working on discipline. <laughs> and uh, comment, ask questions. Uh, feel free. Poke me, dislike. I'm not concerned. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Let's go. Jump.